I got many requests to look at a recent publication according to which we needn't worry about carbon dioxide emissions. Hooray! I can stop saving for an electric car. But wait, maybe let's look at the paper first. This paper is called Climatic Consequences of the Process of Saturation of Radiation Absorption in Gases. The paper was published in March, but it has popped up a few times since in science denier outlets who claim it provides some new evidence. The abstract says that continued and improved experimental work is needed to ascertain whether additionally emitted carbon dioxide into the atmosphere is indeed a greenhouse gas. In the conclusion, Conclusions, they write that, despite the fact that the majority of publications attempt to depict a catastrophic future for our planet due to the anthropogenic increase in carbon dioxide and its impact on Earth's climate, the shown facts raise serious doubts about this influence. And here I was thinking we knew how carbon dioxide impacts the climate. I wonder what new evidence they have. No data was used for the research described in the article. Hmm, let me say I'm a little skeptical about the quality of this new evidence. But let's be open-minded. Maybe they found something that tens of thousands of climate scientists missed for more than a century. The first thing I see when I look at the paper is that this was published in an Elsevier journal on engineering and comes from three guys at an institute of optoelectronics. They're clearly not climate scientists. Then again, I'm not a climate scientist either, am I? The second thing I notice is that this figure doesn't show an actual Planck spectrum. In the text, they write that this is a qualitative description of what they think it looks like, which is not very professional. Then again, the Planck spectrum you've seen in my videos is also hand-drawn because I'm too lazy to get my math software to produce pretty plots, so I have some understanding for that. Before we take a closer look at what they did, here is a brief reminder of why our planet is warming, just so we're all on the same page. Earth gets a lot of energy from the sun in the form of visible light. When that light hits the surface of Earth, it gets converted into infrared light, which we can't see. That infrared light then gets trapped in the atmosphere by carbon dioxide. This keeps our planet warm, which is a good thing. The problem is that we're rapidly increasing the carbon dioxide concentration in the air by burning fossil fuels. This makes it more difficult for our planet to give off heat, which is why it warms very quickly. The problem isn't per se that it warms, but that the need to adapt quickly to a changing climate is eating up a lot of resources and it'll get much worse. So, of course, we all want to hear that it's not happening. That said, let's look at what they did. The paper turns out to be a republication of several earlier papers, notably this one that appeared in Polish a few years ago so much about the alleged new evidence. What they did was to measure the absorption of infrared light by carbon dioxide several times. Interesting in that this has been done thousands of times before. They did one new thing, which is the following. Much like the Earth, the Moon also receives sunlight and emits infrared light. If you measure the infrared light from the Moon on the surface of Earth, that must have passed through the entire atmosphere. So they put a glass tube with carbon dioxide in front of the telescope and find the additional absorption of infrared light is practically negligible. They conclude that additional carbon dioxide does not absorb thermal radiation. Hence, we can keep on emitting carbon dioxide as we wish. It won't make any difference. Unfortunately, they have misunderstood how the greenhouse effect works. Look at this figure. This shows the absorption of light at different wavelengths from different molecules in the atmosphere. The biggest part of the absorption comes from water vapor. However, there is so much water on our planet that human activity has no direct influence on the water vapor concentration. It's determined by equilibrium between the air and the oceans. We indirectly affect it by warming up the oceans because that increases the water vapor pressure. And this is where the carbon dioxide comes in. You see, the carbon dioxide emissions are partly in the same range as water vapor. And as you can see, for the most part, the absorption is indeed 
heat saturated. This means that the infrared light which comes from the surface of Earth never makes it to the top of the atmosphere. Just how far it typically goes depends on the exact wavelength and weather conditions, but it's typically a few hundred meters. So what they find in the papers correct but neither new nor interesting. The greenhouse effect does not work by stopping individual quanta of light from going through the entire atmosphere undisturbed. They basically never do. What happens if you increase the concentration of carbon dioxide is that the average altitude at which infrared light can escape into space moves further up. But further up, the atmosphere is on average colder. Hence, the cooling becomes less efficient until or the atmosphere below has warmed up again. Just exactly what happens depends on the average altitude of emission, but the net effect of carbon dioxide is to reduce infrared emissions. If you don't want to take it from me, then maybe you'll take it from William Hapner, a physicist who has put on pretty much all hats of climate change denial at some point, but eventually settled on, yes, it's real, but it's nothing to worry about. Hapner published a paper in 2020 in which he redid the entire calculation of how infrared emission depends on altitude and concluded the same as climate scientists. All irony aside, Hapner's is a good paper that's helped me a lot to understand how the greenhouse effect actually works. I believe that the reason people get this constantly wrong is that they look at these images of radiation flux like this from the IPCC and think that the arrows show what individual quanta of light do. But this is not what these images show. They just show how much of the total flux goes out. Infrared light escapes at the top of the atmosphere after it has scattered many, many times already. This is why at some point I paid a guy to make a more accurate infographic, all including typo. And well, that's what you get if you try to make it as simple as possible, but not any simpler. It's frankly an embarrassment that this paper got published at all. And if Elsevier has any sense, they'll either retract it or at least add an explanation that the authors completely misunderstood what causes global warming. Or maybe they could rebrand it as a spot the mistake puzzle. Dear oh dear. If you found that somewhat depressing, this will cheer you up. My friends at Planet Wild went on a new mission and it's a great one. They have teamed up with people in the United States to restore the grass and biodiversity in the Wild West to make it, well, wild again. They're removing fences and protecting and monitoring the animals such as bisons. And you can become part of it. Planet Wild is a community-funded nature protection group. They restore ecosystems and change the world for the better, one mission at a time. Each month, Planet Wild embarks on a new mission, which they document with videos right here on YouTube. Whether it's planting trees, reintroducing animals to forests where they once thrived, or using drones to study blue whales, Planet Wild is making a real difference for nature preservation. Planet Wild walks the walk, where others just talk the talk, and you can help them. Visit Planet Wild through the link Link in the description or scan the QR code to learn more. If you still need some encouragement, I have a special offer. I'll cover the first month of your subscription if you're among the first 200 to sign up using my code. Or go and watch some of their videos on YouTube first to learn more about them. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.